How I made a modular war gaming board, part six, the ruined tower tile. I This is probably the favorite one I've uh, done. I think this is absolutely fantastic. And in this video, I'll be showing exactly how I made what you're seeing in front of you, with all the details, and best of all, it's not actually that difficult. So to start off with, we start as we start with all of the tiles in this with a blank bit of tile. Now I took a compass and I drew out a three inch radius, and that's because this is serving a purpose in this um, on this board rather than just being pretty. It's gonna be a, a kind of an objective. Filling in the gaps by uh, drawing these shapes out, and this is just kind of, loosely cobblestone I guess but I'm not really thinking about it just roughly squares going over and over the whole thing so around covering that circle I drawn out and then a little bit extra at the top to serve as the entrance. From here I decided it was looking a little bit too neat so I took a knife and just cut out a few of the tiles just to add a little bit more variety and on top of that as well I used the end of a biro just to kind of press a couple of the tiles in just so they it wasn't so even and you're going to see the results of that in a second but essentially just cutting into the tile and um, just lifting off just like that and here you can see me just using the biro as mentioned a second ago and uh, then that left the uh, board looking a little something like that. Next up, this is a great tip. Um, aluminium foil, tin foil, rolled up into a ball. With this particular foam, if you roll it on it, it gives it a really lovely stone texture. So pre pressing down fairly hard and just rolling it across the entire board. And then you can see the difference that this has made and this will come up and become even more apparent uh, when it is painted in a couple of seconds time. So I started by doing a kind of, a kind of heavy dry brush with some um, stone wall gray from uh, Vallejo, Vallejo paints. And uh, that just went a little something like this. So not trying to remove all of the uh, excess from the brush, but getting a fair bit off and uh, just going at all different angles, catching all the things, not worrying about the holes because they're going to be sorted out in a minute. And that ended up looking like that at this stage. And you see that stone detail is starting to come out. And then I used some uh, leather brown, I've got a fair amount in there, and this is painting in the holes of the tiles that I have removed. Um, and just making them look a little bit muddy in there. And because I had some uh, paint left on the brush, decided to do a bit of a dry brush in there, just make some muddy streaks, mainly focused on the entrance, which I felt like would have some more mud on it. And then I've used some of this uh, black wash here because I felt that the leather brown was just a little bit too light. So that kind of darkened it down a bit and that's what it looked like after that. Now with that done, it was time to build the, the ruins part. So I got some 20 mil thick foam, drew another three inch radius, and then I drew uh, 10 mil in from that because I like to mix up metric and imperial and uh, then cut the whole thing out as carefully as I could. If I'm honest, I could have cut it out a bit neater, but it went fairly well. And uh, that's satisfying, so that's good. Uh, keep, keeping the um, thing going here, we have the, uh, I cut out a kind of archway shape, not too complicated there, I think that was six, uh, 60 mil, and then uh, rolled the tin foil on all of the surfaces of that and all of the surfaces of the archway and then started drawing in some brickwork just to add a bit more detail in which you can see me doing here just straight line so it looks like bricks not difficult and then i uh, held this up against the circular thing and cut the amount out that i needed to such that the archway could fit inside of the uh, circular walls so here i am doing that Whoop. So with that done, I decided I wanted to kind of ruin the, this uh, circle even more. So I did some horizontal and vertical cuts into it so I could cut out pieces. Because the beautiful thing about this being a circle is that by cutting out any piece of it, it can be kind of flipped over and turned around and moved around and added to other parts of the circle to form the rest of the ruin. So as long as you've cut your thing out relatively carefully, you can do exactly that. Because the other thing I wanted with this was a hole at the back, so there was two ways into this kind of ruined tower. So that's what we ended up with. Um, I then decided that I didn't like the idea of the archway being intact, so I uh, took half the archway and decided that was going to be left upright. And after probably five minutes of playing around with all the different pieces and all the different things, decided that I didn't like the idea of the, the 
other half of the archway being in any way intact. So I cut that up. Despite having um, spent ages doing those bricks, I decided to cut that up all into the little pieces that uh, would have been there. Next up, I painted them, just took some cheap black and white paint to mix them up, smothered it in gray paint, and that was it. Uh, next up, gluing things together. So I glued the uh, half archway to the larger piece first, and then the design I'd kind of come up with, I just ended up just gluing this, these bits together with super glue. Uh, the super glue with this foam kind of melts it a little bit, but if you get it on quickly, it kind of melts it together and forms a really nice bond. So it's a very simple case of just um, sticking it together. And then I stuck it down, making sure I put some marks down on the board, as you can see, so I make sure I've got it in the place I wanted it to get into. So put a lot of glue down and then just held it in place. And then within seconds, as you can see, I was able to lift it up because it was strong enough and then doing a similar thing with all of the rest of the pieces, gluing them all together and gluing these individual pieces down as well. And uh, that, in terms of the construction of the piece, was it completed. So next it was on to making it look pretty. So I've used a static grass applicator there because I really wanted the, the kind of the stonework and things on the floor to feel like they were kind of lower. So by using static grass, which kind of generally stays more upright if you do it well, which I didn't do it as well as I would like to have, um, it really kind of adds some depth and some texture to it. So I think you can see it looks fairly good and it looks like um, that the, the, it's a different height, because it kind of is. Then I add some battlefield scatter, which I often call trail mix. It's not called trail mix, that's what you feed birds. So some battlefield scatter just on the kind of edges there. And then to finish off in terms of the flocking here, use the same kind of mix of flocks that I've used on all of the other tiles on the modular wargaming board. Uh, and that means that it will uh, match up with all the other ones and then kind of soaked it in some glue and stuff. Now, I apologize for the quality of this footage. Something to, has kind of gone wrong with it being overexposed in the sunlight, but what I'm doing here is I've taken some Agrax Earthshade and I've uh, been applying that across all the bottom of all of the bits of brickwork. Um, can't really see what I'm doing there, but you can get the idea. Uh, and that's on all of the uh, surfaces on the inside, on the outside, and on the little blocks outside as well. Uh, next up, we use some uh, Seraphim Sepia, I think it's called, and just did exactly the same thing, but just a little bit higher up. So it's kind of a, a darker brown going into a kind of a, a rustier brown. And then what you'll see in a moment is that I finish it off by using some Athonian Camera Shade. Essentially using these three different washes, I'm just adding some grime and some color and some texture just to make it look a little bit more weathered and a bit more, a bit older. Uh, and I was really happy with how it uh, all ended up turning out. So apologies that you can't see exactly what I'm doing in the HD here, but uh, I think you can kind of get the idea. And obviously I'm not gonna miss out the uh, the stones at the front, which I feel like would have got all dirty over the years since it's collapsed. So that was that. Um, then I added some self-adhesive little tufts. Got these from the, the Army Painter, I think it was. Uh, and the, these are great, they really add, I don't know what it is about them, but as soon as you add a few of these, it just, it just really adds something. So I've got a few different colors, and I kind of thought about which ones would be kind of the drier ones, and which one would be the, the grassier ones, and just kind of essentially just chuck them down, really. Uh, I like to add them onto the kind of broken bits of walls as if stuff's been growing in the, in the cracks between them. And then to finish off, and I think what really makes this is the, the kind of a mossy effect. So I just painted on some um, some glue, and then I've taken some coarse grass that's light and some coarse grass that's darker. I mixed them into a kind of a blend, and then the way that I apply this is I kind of just pinch some in between my fingers and then just kind of push it and then spread it. It's not the sort of thing that I've ever been able to um, to sprinkle in any way. But uh, yeah, putting it in in clumps and then just pushing it onto glue. So you want kind of stronger glue rather than watered down glue here. But pushing it on and kind of spreading it, I think it it makes it look like it's supposed to be there. Uh, so that's what I'm doing in a few different places here. I mean, technically if it was moss, then maybe it should just be on one side, like the north side or whatever. But, you know... I'm not gonna beat myself too much about it because I think that it looks awesome. And you can see there's a couple of bricks on the inside there. Those I've put there so that kind of archers could perhaps stand on top of those and shoot arrows out from uh, from inside because we want the, the piece to be great for gameplay as well. 
So that is how I made the tower ruin tile. I think it looks awesome on the game board. Um, can't wait to play a game where this is a central objective or some sort of objective for the game. Um, if you've liked it, please click like. If you've got anything to say about it, please leave a comment. And if you enjoy my descent into madness making this gaming board, then please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.